Good morning, guys. Uh, it's glad, glad we're glad to have all of you guys on. Um, got a good, nice crowd this morning, and um, we're here for the Promise Keepers uh, Bible study. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to welcome those that uh, may not be here live with us as well. That uh, you're all welcome, and please feel free to to connect with us and um, and and chat with us in the in the app. Uh, and we look forward to. To everybody joining in and um, in our discussion, one way or the other, right? Uh, this morning uh, we we are starting a new book. Uh, it's still in the Promise Builders Study Series, but this book is is uh, titled Character Under Construction, and our uh, our study for this week is called Building Inspection. So um, this is the first in a series of of three studies on character uh, is developed in our walk. Uh, this book is, is uh, organized slightly differently than the other book that we were, we were using, and it um, focuses on the walk, our walk, our own personal journey walk first, uh, and then work, um, <clears throat> building a reputation in the workplace, home, and, uh, and whatnot, and then relationships, and, and then after that, um, ministry. So you can think of this as a sort of a bullseye. And so walk is in the middle, and then work and then relationships and then ministry. Um, so you go from checking inward to checking outward. And um, I just figure we'll start this and um, I talked to Chris Fisher, uh, I think you're willing to, to start looking into another study and, um, and, and willing to help facilitate that one or facilitate that one, I should say. <laughs> Um, awesome, and we'll talk. Awesome, Chris. Awesome, Chris. Thanks, man. Yeah, we 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 appreciate well when everybody jumps in, when everybody has an opportunity, and you know, if you've got a study that you want to do, um, feel free to to let us know, or let me know, or let us know, and we'll work that in. All right. Um, so this week, um, the character trait under construction that we're going to talk about is a solid foundation. And I will um, I'll read the warm up that's in the book here, and then I'll ask uh, somebody to be ready to read First Corinthians chapter three and verses nine through fifteen. <clears throat> uh, and before we get started on that, uh, would somebody like to pray us in? I will. Thank you, Chris. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, what a pleasure and privilege it is to be able to gather with these brothers. My Father, we are um, aware that our time is not assured, that we're not promised another day. And so we want to make the most of every opportunity we have to um, grow in uh, likeness of Christ and to grow closer to men to um, encourage one another, to sharpen one another, and to bear one another's burdens. So, Father, in that, um, with that in mind, we offer you this time and ask for your blessing on it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. And I haven't said this in a while. Some of you may, may be new. Uh, welcome. Um, the one, uh, one person on here who we think so we'd like everybody to join in at some time in the conversation. And we have an SMJ20. I believe that's Jeremy, but I may be wrong. Uh, could you just let us know um, your name, your first name? Okay, maybe you're not finding the mute button, but I hope you'll find that in uh, very shortly. Because um, <clears throat> we really would like to Welcome you as well as uh, Romero. I think I, it's the first time I've seen you on, but welcome. Uh, and um, anybody else who I might have missed. Uh, <clears throat> so the warm up for this week and building inspection is um, you see you're you're driving down the road and you see construction every day in in most cities especially, and it seems that uh, structures just take forever to finish. Uh, someone in your carpool asks, are they ever going to get that building up? And another responds with, 
I suppose it must take a lot of work to build a structure of that size. So um, what do you think might happen if the construction company took shortcuts in this project? I'm sure it would never happen, like say in San Francisco and downtown, no one would ever build a really tall building that's falling over in less than 10 years because of using shoddy construction materials, but that would never happen. So that, you know, that's ridiculous. But if somebody were, I think the building would be in danger of not standing for long. You get out of it what you put into it. So if you do shoddy work, you're going to have a shoddy result and a shoddy end product, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Chance that it falls over. How often not, have you not seen... built on a, not built on a solid foundation? And absolutely. How often have we seen um, people take shortcuts and it actually takes longer? When we think of that. Yeah. Uh, what is it so... to do it twice than to do it right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> takes longer and can end up costing more. So our, our company motto uh, several, several years ago was one and done. Right. And do it right the first time. And well, I'm going to read, I'll read the background for the scripture and then, uh, then I'll ask somebody to read uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 15. Um, in this first of 12 sessions, that we have here that'll be called the walk, um, we discover character under construction. Our starting point is to consider how to build our lives and character. In the, in the, uh, in the Apostle Paul's day, strife in the church of Corinth was evidence that the Corinthians were building with inferior materials. We have the same challenge today. We will build our lives and character uh, wisely. Will we build our lives and character wisely? When God begins to build in our lives, he always starts with the foundation. Uh, somebody would read the scripture, 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 15. I appreciate it. Yeah, I will. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Okay, thanks. So, <clears throat> What um, what version of the Bible are you used from minus? New King James Version. Okay. <clears throat> um, and so now we have questions. Now, these questions we do in the app throughout the week, and I hope you guys have been in the app and able to see those and, um, and respond accordingly. And, uh, you can give the same answers as you may have given in the app, but uh, and sometimes I do that as well. But... Um, but feel free to um, just participate either way. But just wanted to to mention and know that um, that we do try to do this on a daily basis. All right, and there's a reason for doing it on a daily basis as well as a reason for doing it on a weekly basis, right? Because uh, uh, we we should wake up every morning and give our daily to God. And we've talked about that here many times. Uh, we've talked about the book, the first hour, which I'm sure. Carl will hold up to us, hold up and show us uh, here in a second. <laughs> he always does. He always do. And it's great. Um, so give our first hour to God and the rest of our day. It helps us to do that the rest of our day. Uh, but also weekly, um, to put in your, put something in your weekly calendar uh, makes it more routine. It says, hey, 
if I can possibly be there, I'll be there. If not, well, I'll catch up the next week. And I won't have to wait a, a few weeks or a month until I get back into it. So please know if you miss a week, uh, no big deal. We will miss you, but we will uh, ho hope that and pray that you're back with us uh, the next week. And that's another reason that we do uh, small groups of that I believe we, we need to do small groups at least on a weekly basis. All right, so <clears throat> questions for the scripture this week are, uh, first question is, the Apostle Paul states that Jesus Christ is the only foundation for life and character. Why is this? He's the way and the life. He's the foundation. I mean, that's just flat out without him. I mean, he said it, right? That nobody will get to heaven except through him. Is that what you would say? What would you say to people that don't believe that? How how do we convince? How do we not not convince people? That's a that's a harsh word. But how do we talk to people so that, as we were talking about last week, that we were the salt and the light, and that uh, they accept or they start to think at least uh, when you plant that seed? Sorry, Chris, you were going to say something. I apologize. Nope. Thing I would say about that is that you, we just have to, you know, it's hard to tell somebody that doesn't believe. I'm a, I'm a perfect living example of that. Um, but it, on the other side of that, the best way that we can do that is by just showing them walking, leading by example. One of the things that I uh, like to uh, share with folks uh, when. Uh, you know, I mentioned that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Uh, they'll, you know, say whatever it is they say uh, in, in reply. And uh, it's usually, well, you know, that seems pretty rigid or whatever. And I'll ask them, do all roads lead to Los Angeles? And they're like, well, no. And I said, well, if you're, if you're on Interstate 35 that goes north and south and you stay on that, you're never going to get to Los Angeles. So you have to change the, to the road that leads to Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, that often makes them think, if nothing else, that, well, in reality or in, in, on the earth and in, in this life, there's obviously just places that you can only get to by going one way. And even more so in the spiritual, that if you're going to come to God, you have to go through Jesus Christ. It's the only way. That's awesome, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just it's it's a great um, you know reminder that we have to apply God's word, right? Um, he wants us to apply his his word to our situation to our world, right? Uh, our world isn't all that much different than when the Bible was was written or these words were spoken and uh, captured. Uh, but it is important that we feed into people's lives in ways that they will um, potentially accept, right? You never know really what's on somebody's heart. We're not God. We're not Jesus. We. It's very hard for us as humans to to know what's actually on somebody's heart. That's the reason we're called not to ju be the judge, let, let God be the judge. And, um, but, but yet, you know, work uh, in the world, but not be of the world, right? Is that, hopefully that makes sense too. I know that's kind of, kind of churchy language as well. But. Yeah, uh, one thing, um, brother, I don't want to, you know, forget the thing is that it's a foundation for life and character. Character is a phenomenal thing. It's when I bring Jesus Christ into discussion in respect of any faith, um, people, you know, they won't challenge the character of Jesus Christ as a human being or another God, if they know that, right? So that's, um, and that, that, that brings to the, the bottom of the discussion for me. And then when is a, if anything else, when some, suppose if somebody says he's rich or something else, no, Jesus Christ won't match over there. But the character is uncompromising. You know, people know that Jesus is Prince of Peace, I mean, peace. Um, Jesus is a symbol of love. 
when Jesus, uh, those things, nobody argues uh, with, and that's what everybody's pursuit is. So it's a good question to say that when, if you read it, the apostle Paul said that Jesus Christ is the only foundation for life and character. Yes, I agree with that as well, that um, it, it, it's hard to convince anyone who doesn't believe, especially using scripture verses, but any, if you're having this discussion with someone, they probably already have some knowledge of Christ. And that being the case, as Sri said, um, you know, it's just simply a challenge to them. Show me where he wasn't a man of integrity. Show me where he didn't make the right decisions. Show me where he didn't treat people the way people should be treated. Um, he, regardless of who you are, he is a perfect example of a cornerstone. So, yeah, that, that part's hard to dispute by anyone. And I think one of the aspects, too, when we share Christ well, with people, take the wife on. it's the um, whole um, relational aspect of it, where if people know that I'm an alcoholic and I'm sitting there cussing all the time and I'm telling dirty jokes, but then I try to tell those same people about Jesus, something's not matching up. So our actions actually have to match our words. Amen. Right, and, and uh, kind of playing off the Josh McDowell idea that Jesus either needed to be Lord, lunatic, or liar, if he's not the foundation, if he's not the one foundation, the one true foundation, uh, upon which to build with gold, silver, and precious stones, then he's a liar because he he told the he told the people himself that you know one person built this house on sand and it got washed away and another person built his house on on solid rock and his house stood. Uh, so don't be like the foolish person. So that was Jesus talking about himself. Um, so if he's not the foundation, then he's then he was a liar. Chris is uh, making a really good point about that foundation in the uh, foolish man and the wise man. Lived here in Texas, um, I've been really impressed uh, with the way that foundations are built. Um, they build uh, um, a, a, a structure that's not just a slab. There are actually beams built into the foundation. And when you talk to a foundation expert, uh, the structure of that foundation will last longer than the house on top of it. And, and it's very interesting that we adopt that as a building uh, uh, law here in our natural world, but we don't want to do that necessarily in our spiritual world. So I think one of the things I, I like to do is take a person from a natural perspective to a supernatural perspective. We all have a supernatural perspective. We're all spiritual in some sense. We may deny it. So if you take them with the natural, which is what Jesus said, you all know what it looks like when an idiot builds on sand. You know what happens. The guy has a family that's saying, what did you do to us? And uh, we also can see that very logically. And I think that's one of the blessings that we have in sharing the good news with, uh, with people that don't yet know. Yeah, good morning, everyone. So my name is uh, Ramil. I am uh, connecting from Mexico. And uh, well, it's great to, to meet you. And yeah, that discussion is uh, really important. I guess, uh, James, uh, you were talking about how to convince people. You say, well, I don't really want to use that word because it's very strong. But yeah, the, the first thing is that we need to convince ourselves that Jesus is the foundation of the, 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 the structure. And, you know, uh, when you realize that you have, you know, considered Jesus as the foundation of your character, of your life, when time flies, you realize that if you haven't, you know, considered Jesus as the main foundation of your life, you might have different, you know, collapses and different kinds of problems in life. So when you are a very much convinced and you are sure that Jesus is the foundation, so you can tell and other people can tell obviously by the way you are, your life is 
what your character is. And actually, this is, I guess, the most important thing. You need to be sure that Jesus is the foundation, and then you need to live it. You need to walk the talk. That's my opinion. Absolutely. I think about the woman, I think about the woman at the well, right? Jesus didn't try to convince her. He told her about if he if, if she drank from the water that he was offering, that she would never be thirsty again. Well, that was something that was enticing and intriguing to her. So he didn't convince her. He just made it sound very like, I want some of that. Mm. So that's a way that we have to approach people in this. Yeah. I think it's really good to circle everything back into where are they at in their life and everything. When you're talking about, you know, people that are faced with hopelessness, you know, showing them that they can find hope in Christ and, you know, the way that the road warrior really connects his job and, you know, the interstate routes and everything back to there only being one way to Christ. Yeah, I, I especially like the way uh, we had in the uh, consider this quote last last week, uh, and this is a, a a quote I've used many many times because I don't consider myself a great speaker, a great communicator, but um, in Francis Saint Francis Assisi said, uh, preach the gospel all the time, and if necessary, use words. Um, I that just has always hit home to me, and, and it goes along with what. You know, many of you are saying here, actions do speak louder than words. So That's why? Funny. I always used to kind of get bothered by that quote when used as an indication that you don't actually have to use words. You, you can't share the gospel. You can't, someone can't be saved without words. They need, they need the word of God to be saved. But I do appreciate his point. It, it's kind of like a counterbalance to the idea that I only need words that the only good thing I need to do for people is to give them the word. Now, you, James said that faith without works is dead, that uh, you, you show me your faith and I'll show you my, I'll show you my works uh, to prove my faith. So we need both. Yeah. So why does Paul alert us to the dangers of taking shortcuts while building on this solid foundation? He's warning that there's going to be a consequence, a consequence of of uh, of failure, um, not just the uh, not just the wrong foundation, but also even shoddy building on top of the right foundation. That he continues the metaphor on and says, so even if you're building on the correct foundation which he's laid. I've laid the only foundation that matters, Jesus Christ. Now, once you're building on the right foundation, it's up to you to put the right stuff on top of that foundation. And if you don't, there's going to be uh, consequences for that. Yeah, it says, and it says the day will bring it to the light. To light. Um. We'll talk, we can talk now or we can talk later. We will talk about the day, right? Um, do you think, do you think that it might have been something too where, you know, Paul was so well knowledge of the Old Testament and the prophets and everything, but that didn't prepare him to meet Jesus and like he, when the Messiah came and he heard stories of the Messiah and the Christians and everything like that, like all that knowledge he had built on as a foundation didn't matter because he still missed the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Tom, Think of the um, parable of the sower. Um, yeah. You know, that if we don't, you know what I mean? We can talk foundation, we can talk roots, right? If we're, if we're planted on a top of a rock, we're not gonna grow. But if we have good soil, 
a good foundation, right? Then we'll dig our roots deep and be solid. And I think uh, be what Jay was alluding to that we'd be talk about later or something that that day is uh, when we're building a foundation, um, especially here in California where the ground moves all the time, to go through a, a building inspection is absolutely grueling sometimes. To, uh, we, we put a, a wall in our backyard and it was just amazing how many inspections had to be done for that wall. Uh, so that day is the day that someone comes around and inspects our foundation to see where we are built, you know, to, to see what we're rooted on and if we can withstand uh, the, the evils of this world, so to speak. Yeah. Um, William, you got something? All right. Um, Tom, you in the chat, you put um, something and you said, I brought up about Buddha and idols. Do you mind expanding on what you meant by you brought that up? You're talking to other religions? Well, what I'm trying to do is trying to convince, uh, talk to the wife more about getting into more spirituality, uh, going, getting into the word, reading it. And she's talking about going to uh, find out what church we want to go to, as opposed to like right now, I'm going to a Pentecostal or a non-denominational church. And she's bringing up about going to maybe uh, Baptist, Lutheran, stuff like that. She goes, how would you convince somebody that's from another country? And Buddha got, got brought up. And I'm like, well, they're worshiping an idol. They're not worshiping Jesus. But it's kind of hard to convince somebody into that. You can't convince them because that's their beliefs. So it's something I got to work on. I've been trying to pray about. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's certainly reasons for all those other religions, and and and, um, and as though, you know, people grow up, like you said, in a particular country, and may that country may have another predominant religion, um, but they're just never going to satisfy uh, life. The the foundation upon which they build is just not very. Um, even though it's old and it's traditional, it's not as solid as Jesus Christ. And um, it, it, it does take, it does take a getting to know somebody and understanding their, their beliefs before we can really begin to uh, uh, speak to them in a way that they might hear. You know, they, they might uh, be able to um you know, accept the seed that you're trying to sow with Jesus Christ. And, um, and, and there's, in that case, there's no shortcut to that, right? It takes time uh, to, to learn what is on someone's heart. So um, I think that's a good point. Um, there are, you know, many beliefs in this world. And, uh, you know, we know that the only one that has a, a savior uh, that is, came and saved us and loved us before uh, we even uh, knew about them is Jesus Christ. Um, so co let, it, let's compare and contrast the building materials available for life and character. Real quick, before we go on to, to that, um, yeah. I, I'm reminded of what Paul did in, at the Aragapas. In, uh, on Mars Hill uh, in Greece. Um, he, uh, he started off by complimenting the audience by saying, I can see that you all are very religious. And um, then he says, I was looking at all your objects of worship and then I found you know, the uh, temple to the unknown God. And well, I'm gonna explain to you who he is. But that wouldn't obviously work in every situation because not everybody's gonna have a temple to an unknown God. However, if you start from the foundation that, well, you know, I can see that you guys are really faithful to, you know, what you believe and da, 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 da. And if you start off with that, then it's kind of disarming. They're, they're uh, not going to be um, uh, as uh, hesitant to listen to your point of view um, as they would be otherwise if you're telling them, oh, well, you guys are just wrong. You're, you're worshiping uh, an idol made of wood, stone or whatever. 
Um, and so if you approach them in a, um, a uh, kind way that, uh, hey, you know, I, 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 I noticed that you're, you're pretty faithful with that or whatever, that gives you an inroad to talk to them and you've earned a right to speak. And uh, so uh, just my two cents anyway. Yeah, thanks, John. Yeah, I, I think you have to earn that right to speak to them. Um, and that might be by your actions, you know, first. Um, I agree, Chris, with what you said. You know, um, I, I do believe, too, that, you know, people are going to see you long before you know. It's like, like uh, you know, children, right? You're raising children, um, and they're often, they often catch uh, what you're about long before you, they hear what you're about, right? Um, <clears throat> so I, I'm not sure really where to go with this. I, I wasn't when I, when I put it in to begin with. I just can't, um, I'm not putting it into context, and maybe some of you guys can help us, help us with this one, but compare and contrast the building materials available for life and character well uh you know building blocks for life and character um being truthful uh being honest being loving and basically if, if we look at the fruits of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control if we're allowing the holy spirit to produce those building blocks in us then that's building integrity. Those are um, the parts of the things we need. And it also tells us to think about the things which are true and noble and right, pure, lovely, admirable. Th those things are the building blocks of character and integrity. So we have the, we have the blueprints uh, right here in, in the book in front of us, this, this wonderful Bible that God gave us. It gives us all these building blocks and it's how we assemble them and how well we lay them on that foundation. Um, <clears throat> there, you know, I've got another, I do several reading plans and things. And one of them had me in first Peter this week. And I just, it was just amazing because the way God works um, in first Peter chapter two, verses four through eight, it says, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. So I just thought it was interesting how Peter was also bringing, you know, this cornerstone and the building blocks and everything. So I, I think the, the, the thing you're looking for there is we can either be honest or dishonest we can we can treat our friends like crap or we can treat them like jesus you know and, and be loving to them um so that's the that's the difference in using quality building materials and, and using substandard building materials that are going to collapse over time just to con just to contrast to that one quickly is that when we build life on you know our job our uh, money, American dream, a car, and house, our pursuit and what character we develop in that life. Um, just to contrast what you mentioned with the call is that, you know, given a contrast in that means, where are we for letting our children to focus on? What are we mentoring them? What are we mentoring ourselves? And that, hey, when you grow up, you want to become an a person of character or person of, you know what, you, you can drive this car, show that car. And this. These are all things which we need to be challenged ourselves with this. Great question. Yeah, the, uh, the get rich quick schemes or uh, when you're, if you build your life on that, um, it, 
it probably is not going to last. It's probably not going to work out very well for you. Um, the you know instant gratification that uh, is taught quite often in our uh, I think partly by you know every kid getting a a, a trophy for participating uh, that kind of thing um, and in other ways that our society just uh, you know rewards us for um, for what we did in the moment um, <clears throat> and um, what else? What else? There, so there's things like that as well, I think, that are uh, building blocks or using materials that just aren't as solid, aren't as, um, aren't the right components or the right materials to be using at the time. You know, back before my building crumbled because it was built on a sandy foundation, um, I thought I was giving my children some really good advice. Follow your heart. You know, and then, and because that's what I felt like I was doing, following my heart. My daughter even sent me a Father's Day present one time. It was a conglomeration of songs, and the first one on it was Free Bird. Um, so it's okay to follow your heart if your heart is in that foundation of Jesus. But we have to be careful how we use those same, see, that, that, that could be the same building material right there. Follow your heart, you know. That is a building material. Follow your heart. Well, the question then belongs, where is your heart? Because if you, you know, where, where you lay up your treasures, it tells us, right? So uh, we have to be careful with our building materials and how we use them. Because following your heart isn't always the right building material to use. I might even be willing to say it's rarely the correct building material. <laughs> And even well, when you become it's desperately yeah. wicked, who can understand it? Right. Yeah. Unless you're completely founded and rooted in that solid foundation of Christ, you can't follow your heart because that's what we're always trying to do is get our our heart connected to Jesus. And 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 that's where our our holes are that need to be filled. So yeah, following your heart normally is gonna lead you to a worldly way of things. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the number of times where even when I when I'm doing the right thing and I think I'm like doing it for the right reasons. When I start just get this tinge of, man, I'm really awesome because I'm doing this good thing. And I go, wow, even in doing good, I'm letting pride slip in or a feeling of smug superiority, self-righteousness over somebody else. Cause I'm doing this good thing and they're just not. And yeah. The heart is so easily swayed to, pursue elevating myself over elevating God, even in doing good that, yeah, I, I follow your heart is, is usually dangerous advice. Amen. No, Chris, I like you're it. the only one that's ever dealt with that. You're all by yourself <laughs> with that one, man. And if, if you say you've never done that, then either you've never done anything good or you're lying to yourself. I was going to say, we can have an altar call after this meeting, if you want. <laughs> One of my favorite like jokes about myself is that I am very proud of my humility. <laughs> we know I John like what has Paul a few did. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Emery. I like what Paul uh, uh, reminded us of, that he starts out in his early letter saying that he is a sinner. Then he expands and he says uh, that I, what I desire to do, I don't do. And then at the end of his writing, he says, I'm chief among sinners. And, and I think he really got a perspective that we're all in desperate need of grace. The one thing that I do, uh, and I put in the chat, the one thing that I do uh, like to remind us, God uses our heart and he wants us to guard our heart. So if we just, you know, deny that our heart has any message at all, what we might do is, you know, kind of disregard it altogether. And I think God wants us to be in balance. How is his influence uh, affecting our heart? The, out of the desires of our heart, you know. Uh, uh, so if we're really tuned in to the frequency of God, we're tuned into his assignments, then our heart is going to speak that. And one last point, um, 
I believe that the, uh, the declaration that God put in um, the promise that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, comes after every tribe and tongue and nation hears the gospel. Well, they're only going to hear the gospel in their heart language. So we have to get into their page, whether it's Hindu or Muslim or whatever, you know, Eastern religion, we have to get into their heart and say, why are you looking there? It's almost like looking in a dumpster for a meal when there is a, an in invitation to the restaurant and a, a table seated for that person right in front of the dumpster, but they don't see it. So if we, if we speak to people with the idea that your heart is taking you in a direction, you may want to listen to it, but not trust it until it's been filtered through what God would say to you. I think that's an important ingredient. So, so it, it's, um, it's easy for us to recognize, it, it's often easy for us to recognize a Christian, but um, just so we, we get there, um, can you describe a Christian you know, no names are necessary, whose life and character reflect the right building materials? Anybody have somebody that they've run across in their life that? Um, yeah, the first, first trait I see is that they're givers. And um, in times of trouble, they praise God. I think that's a big one, Sri, is it's easy to praise God when you get what you prayed for. It's completely different, and it speaks volumes of the actual roots that you have in Christ when you praise him when everything's taken from you. I like uh, men who build you up, you know, to uh, see where you've been and maybe have been where you've been and are there to give you encouragement. Um, that's been hugely helpful for me being on here, that's for sure. I was thinking of the, uh, of the, the truly humble man who gives God the credit for anything good that you see in him. I would say, I would say, and I would be 100% confident that Carl Justice is one of these guys we're talking about. Amen. Because he exemplifies all this. And because of the whole man he is, he's going to deny it right now. <laughs> yeah, you saw it on his face. He was like, that's it's not me. It's, <laughs> it's about God. Yeah. I put a link in the chat to a, a guy I watched yesterday from Living Waters. His name is Ray Comfort. And it's kind of what he does is evangelism. Um, goes out, talks to people on the street, records it, and shares shares the stories. But, I mean, he's, he's very good at doing exactly what we're talking about. And the very first question here today was how do you bring somebody or convince somebody about Christ? You ought, you ought to watch that that video and if you're interested in that you know he's got a ton more on his website but yeah, really you, really powerful you could see four hours of your day disappear once you start watching right comfort videos yeah <laughs> amen to that okay so our, our last question for today or at least last uh, whatever there's another question after this always i think but um at the building site the workers are uneasy when they see the period periodic arrival of the building inspector's truck. Why should we also have a certain uneasiness about the judgment day? <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna allude back to the comment made by uh, Brother Jonathan there. Um, when you have built a building on a foundation like mine was, and you see it crumble, and you see the destruction of everything around you, all your family, all your friends were in that building you built. 
and now they're laying in a pile of rubble. And then God reaches down with his hand and shows you his son. He shows you his mercy and his grace. And he even shows you that mercy and grace through those people that were in that building that you built on a really crappy foundation. Then you start trying to do it right the second time, trying to make sure that your foundation is solid, trying to make sure that your building materials withstand the fire each and every day. That's why I am where I am now. I haven't been that way for a long time. Most of, mostly the time that you guys have known me and, and shortly before then. God's change in my life has only been in the last four years. Um, so that's the qualities and characteristics that Brother Jonathan spoke about in me are things that God has shown me that it is the only way. It is the foundation. If I start stepping outside of those bounds and starting to follow my heart again, then I just need to step back and uh, really think about what I'm doing. I, I think I think we each need to be uh, uneasy at times. Hopefully not all the time, <laughs> but uneasy at times because we're going to sin. We're going to we're going to make mistakes. We're going to use the wrong materials to build our character. And, um, you know, I know this, this past uh, couple of weeks, uh, there's been times when I just, I just look, I just, I catch myself and I look at, why did you say that? Why, why did you act that way? Why, why can't you just let some things roll that, you know, when stuff comes at you and in ways that you, you don't want. So that uneasiness of always asking what would Jesus do, right? Always in every situation. Um, that in itself is uneasiness because like Chris and, and probably others and others said here, you know, there's, there's good. We can be doing good in, in our lives. Um, and, and, and doing good with our lives, but is it the best we can be doing? Is it what God wants us to be doing? Um, that's what that's what I think uh, He'll judge He'll He'll judge us on is, um, you know, were you listening to me this day when I asked you to do whatever, right? Um, or did you just do your own thing? And quite often, you know, I can tell you, I do I do my own thing. Um, cause I think it's the best, but if I don't consider what, what God, uh, needs me to be doing at that time or wants me to be doing, and I, I can tell you, it's not the best. It's not the way, right? Anyway, anybody else? James, uh, John is, uh, driving along and he reminds me, uh, of a thing that God taught me. Um, I used to drive a thousand miles a week, uh, in my, uh, occupation and obviously you're around a lot of other drivers and you get very, uh, annoyed with their behavior and, uh, God being the still small voice would love to, uh, just say, Hey, Emery. Yeah. Um, he just did something really stupid, didn't he? Yeah. Well, he's a human being, right? Yeah. Okay. See you later. 20 minutes later. Hey, Emery. Yeah. What did you just do? Oh. What that guy 20 minutes ago did. Well, why is it when he does it, you get irritated, but when you do it, you want to pass? Uh all right, God, would you quit reading my mail? Would you just give me a little grace? I mean, after all, I'm trying to drive here. <laughs> Amen. You know, yeah, one I've, thing. I've, I've hey, I want you to live in my okay? Because it hit home here. <laughs>
John broke up. Sorry, we we missed a lot of that. Or I did. Oh, I, I I was I was saying that you know, telling him stop living my life. You know, I <laughs> I get enough of that on my own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I've heard that I don't know how many times from my wife this this week. Why is it okay when you do it and when I do it? You know, when whatever you know whatever's going on. But um, so those are the kinds of things that I'm been catching myself on. Um, <clears throat> so uh, instead of a consider this, this book has a hard hat area, at least in this uh, one, because it's all about construction, right? So um, it says reputation is what people think you are. Character is what you really are. Amen. And um, so unforeseen challenge in our, challenges in our lives have a way of inspecting our character building process. If somebody said, um, you know, it's, it, it's what do you, how do you react to a crisis, right? Uh, what do you do? What's that process like in your life? So um, have you had any recent challenges um, where, where you confronted, uh, where you were, that have, that you have been confronted with? What are some of your recent challenges that you share with us? I shared a couple there. My wife and driving uh, back and forth to Ohio um, was, was one of mine. Mine is if I don't get the vaccine, I can no longer work with my company. It was just brought out to me this week. Wow. Yep. I can say. That's okay. God's got it. <clears throat> one way. Hey, no, yeah. <laughs> Say that, you know, I think this kind of falls into the driving thing that, that uh, Emory and John were talking about. But sometimes, you know, God's trying to tell us to take the log out of your own eye before you start thinking about what somebody else is doing wrong. You need to focus on yourself. It's definitely something I've been working on over the last week. You know, our I've scripture been blessed. Go ahead, no. Carl. Yeah, our scripture verse this week tells us that there's one of the most, to me, one of the most important things out of it. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. So as we're building these things, we have an opportunity to watch our brothers around us while we're doing the iron sharpening iron things. And when that fire comes that day, we're like, okay, did mine survive? If mine survived, okay, that was pretty good there. So let's go to the next day. Oh no, mine got destroyed today, so I can't do it that way again. I can't use that building material again. I think it's just a wonderful promise that, you know, we may suffer loss, but we will be saved. I really love that James is uh, transparent uh, in his honesty about what his wife's uh, comments are. Um, my wife years ago told me, Emery, you're the thermostat in the home whatever you set the temperature at, that's what the comfort level is for everybody else. And I really kicked against it. I'm like, look, you guys are all accountable for your relationship with God. Don't blame it on me. And then God says, Emery, isn't she right? So one of the issues that I deal with uh, very commonly, she would be very correct in saying this, my if i if i look at my reputation as what i want to create rather than my character everybody else outside can think i'm a really nice guy but those who really know me know my true character and uh, one of the things that this about the iron sharpening iron we have to be transparent with one another so that we're not building a false reputation we're being building a true character we're not perfect. We're messing up. Our wives know it. <laughs> but we're on the trail. And what Carl uh, alluded to is, is, the, is really the crux of it. You start out and you finally recognize that your life is a mess. <laughs> and at some point, you say, this is enough. I don't want to be a mess any longer. And you look for a solution. You look for the right building materials. Nobody goes out and collects hay, wheat, and stubble. That's not a collectible. But silver, 
precious stones, gold, those are collectibles. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I really like the idea that, you know, our reputation is what we are on Sunday mornings or what we are on the PK app where our character is who we are when we're with our wives at home. Which, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to build a corollary on that, which is if you don't have at least a guy or two that you spend more than an hour a week with, you don't actually have any real iron sharpening iron. You've got my reputation sharpening your reputation. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, our response as a promise keeper, um, it, uh, it says, I will, I'll ask the Lord to examine my character using Psalm 139, 23, 24. I'll read that. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So let's ask God to, to examine us that way this week. And, uh, and secondly, I will begin making necessary adjustments that he reveals. When he searches you, he will show you um, what you need to do. And we must trust that he is right and obey what he um, what he gives us to do. Um, <clears throat> so I'd, I'd like to um, to go to our Lord in prayer. Uh, this book suggests a a prayer journal, by the way. Um, so if if um, if somebody would like to keep a journal for us, that would be great for us as a group. Uh, or and or I encourage you to keep your own. Um, your own journal and you can just do that on a piece of paper with, you know, something like, you know, the date and what the prayer request is and who it was from and, and then what the answer is eventually. Um, you may get an answer right then. You may get an answer uh, a few days or weeks uh, in the, in the future. But um, it also has a, you know, as I put in the, in the app. Uh, so for, for one minute, we're going to pray silently about today's study. And then we're going to take some time to express thanks to God together. And then, and then we can write in our journal after we're done and, and then also pray for each other throughout the week. Uh, so spend time praying for each of the men here, uh, other men in the app. Um, and and I, I trust that, you know, we're doing that. I, I, I have to believe that we're doing that. Uh, I love the fact that when people come to us with issues in the app, um, people pray for them. They don't always try to give them the, sometimes if they've been there, they'll give them some, uh, some, some methods, right. Or some, uh, some answer, but a lot of times the answer is prayer and praying for somebody right then and there on the spot is usually, uh, you know, whatever God is laying on your heart is best. So let's just take a, a minute and, uh, and pray silently and then we'll express our thanks to God together. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you are in our lives and that uh, you are our solid foundation, our cornerstone, that we can always, uh, no matter how we mess up, Lord, you're always there 
to help us through our situation, to give us the best of life and to uh, show us the way that we should go and how we should treat those around us. And Lord, I just pray that you will search me and give me the strength to be the person that you want me to be uh, to those around me. And so, Lord, we just we thank you. We thank you. We praise you and rejoice in this day that you give us. Anybody else want to praise God? I want to praise God this morning for all these brothers that are on here, Father. Thank you for bringing these men in my life. Most of all, thank you for bringing your son Jesus into my life. Thank you for the sacrifices that he made for me. Thank you for loving us that way and showing us your grace and mercy, Father. And I just pray traveling blessings on my brother John there and all the others that may be out and about this morning, Father. Just thank you for your love and your kindness. In Jesus' name. Father God, I just thank you for bringing us all together and, and uh, giving us the wisdom that we have to uh, share and, and uh, help uh, iron sharpen iron with each other. And uh, just as your scripture said, show us uh, if there's any wicked way in us and help us to live for you and build on the foundation uh, the, the precious things, not the wood, hay, or stubble. May you be glorified in all of it, I pray in Jesus' name. Father, I want to praise you for your long-suffering and your mercy. <clears throat> Lord, I love your word, but my favorite <clears throat> passage is Lamentations 3, where you say that your mercies are new every morning. Every morning I have a new chance, a clean slate, to, a new opportunity to rest within your provisions and to walk faithfully and humbly with you. And that you've been long suffering and patient with me as I went astray. And that you love me enough to chasten me and uh, give me that spiritual two by four against the head to get me back on the right path. Lord, I thank you for creating us in your image. Lord, I thank you for the example that you show us in Genesis that you created the world and said it was good. But when you created us, you said we were very good. So, Lord, that just shows me even more the desperate nature that we are in when we made a choice to rebel against you. Father, there is precious stones. There is gold and silver in each of us. And we have the choice to build with that that you've put in us or to pick up the hay, wheat, and stubble that's all around us. Lord, it's our choice. And I thank you that not only do you give us that free will, but you give us the insight that what our choice is makes a difference to the circle around us. And our actions matter, not just to our own lives, but to everyone we touch. Lord, I thank you that these men recognize that we can't do it alone. We need to not only do it day by day, moment by moment with you, but also to look to the left and the right to the men who are around us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to give you thanks for uh, this opportunity to, to, to get to know each other in the way we are. And I really appreciate your, your, your mercy and your faithfulness in every day. And I want to give you thanks for the opportunity to get connected using technology in these times. And uh, thank you because in that way we are very much able and open to, to <coughs> show who we are. Thank you for every person in, in the group and thank you because you know the way we are talking is actually the experience we have in our lives and thank you for this fellowship in Jesus name.
And all of God's men said, Amen. 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 Well, um, See, before, before everybody jumps yeah. off, I just wanted to rem remind everybody, if you didn't already know, that Promise Keepers has a fatherhood summit coming up November the 10th. And so I put a, the URL in the chat, so it's just promisekeepers.org uh, forward slash fatherhood. So it's going to be a one-hour event on the 10th. And that'll be followed up with 14 days of encouragement and practical application on the PKF. Hey, Jonathan, responding mm -hmm. to that, uh, are we um, uh, kind of um, encouraging people to do that on their own or to gather together with men in a, a venue, a church, and, and watch it together? I think it would be incredible if uh, you did something at a church with a group of men or even a small group, a couple of right. brothers getting together and, and doing it. Yeah, and that way they can, you know, can hold each other accountable uh, and talk, maybe talk uh, about the challenge and, and what it's doing, too. Um, we hope that you'll join the challenge in the app afterwards. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Jonathan. I, I uh, That gives us time. But, you know, definitely in your church, feel free to, to use that in your church for large or small groups, whatever is appropriate. Those of you that are ambassadors, and hopefully you'll be sharing that with churches that you're working with or men that, um, that you might be discipling. All right. Well, God bless you guys. Have a great week, and let's go and be the church. Love you, brothers. Thank Thank you. You. It's very Love nice you to meet you. Very nice to meet you, too. Hello, Romero. Hello, Romero. Hopefully Thank you'll you. come back. Bye, Marie. Bye-bye. Drive safe, John. I'll do my best. Thank you. <laughs> All right. God bless you guys. Um, JM, somebody's on J20A 